Hello everybody, uh, this is Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. I want to talk today about the word believe. Uh, the word believe appears in the New Testament uh, 237 times. It, it appears in the Gospel of John 85 times. Now, if we contrast the 85 times the book of John tells us to believe to the number of times the book of John tells us to repent, uh, it's 85 for believe and zero for repent. That should pretty much settle the question of uh, are you required to repent and believe? If, if you're defining repent as change your mind about your sin or get sin out of your life. Uh, if, if that's what you think repent means in these cases, uh, in the book of John, it just says, believe, 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 believe 85 times and not once repent. But even though it should be so clear, there, there should be no more confusion. If, uh, even then, people still try to redefine the word believe. I've made other videos talking about what the word actually means. But uh, I, I want to analyze the word believe. I see some interesting things in it that, uh, that I've never noticed before. But, but first, just uh, let's just look at this. And, and, and the, the Gospel of John, 1 John 1.7 John says, the same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. And then five verses later, uh, verse 12, but as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. And then verse 50, Jesus answered and said unto him, because I said unto you, unto thee, I saw thee under the fig tree, believest thou? Thou shalt see greater things than these. Well, that on and on and on, 85 times, we see believe, believe, believe. And, of course, we know the famous conversation between with Paul and Silas talking to the Philippian jailer. And the jailer asked them, what must I do to be saved? And uh, he didn't get a long theological answer. There were not, uh, you know, 10 or 20 bullet points covered. Uh, Paul answered him very succinctly and clearly, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. So I think it's, uh, it's obvious to anybody who really wants to study this and know the truth that that is the one requirement. We must believe on Jesus. That means to depend on him, to rely on him, to trust him, to have confidence in him, put no faith in ourselves, do not believe in yourself, do not rely on yourself in any way, but believe and rely on Jesus 100% completely. That's really what it boils down to. But there's also some interesting things that I've discovered with the word believe. Uh, it's spelled, of course, B-E-L-I-E. V E. And let's just look at this. The first two letters are B. B E. Uh, Brother Rob has sent me some uh, interesting materials in the last few months, and uh, uh, I think he got it from uh, Malcolm Smith. But uh, you're supposed to be a human being. That's what you're supposed to do. You're, you're supposed to be being. That's what we are supposed to be doing. We are being. That means we're just existing. We're being. Um, but many people think that in Christianity, we must be a human doing. We got to do, do, do. But of course, uh, Jesus on the cross says, it is finished. That means that it's done. It's not up to us to do. 
because Jesus has already done everything that was needed for our salvation. Also, in the garden, I believe, if you study the garden account, and you think of it with these glasses, put on these glasses as you read it. Consider this. What God really, really wanted with Adam and Eve, and with us, is for us to be human beings. He just wanted us to be, he didn't require us to do anything. Uh, he wanted to provide everything for us. So we didn't have to do, he did it all in the garden. He provided the air, the land, the, uh, the food, everything that they needed. And that's the relationship God wanted with us, with humanity. If God wants to be our provider and God wants us to depend on him for everything. And, and in fact, we do, whether you realize it or not, you, you could not be alive if God did not provide your existence and your, the air you breathe and all the things that you, you, uh, you water you drink, food you eat. That's because God's provided it for you. But that's really what God wants to do. He wants to provide for us and he wants us to depend on him. Um, so he just wants us to be instead of do. Um, the rebellion, of course, was over that very thing. Uh, Adam and Eve, the, the decision was that they wanted to um, not be dependent on God, but they wanted to become independent from God. So a lot of people think that the, uh, the sin that caused the fall and uh, the original sin was actually eating from the tree. But um, really, uh, there's a series of things that happened. And the very first sin is, this, is the sin that is, still exists today that is the only thing that God cannot tolerate. And that's the sin of unbelief. God told Adam and Eve, do not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, or you will die that day. And then, of course, they heard it, they understood it, but Satan later told Eve, did God say that don't eat of the tree or you'll die? That's not so. You won't die. Instead, you'll actually become like God. You'll have the knowledge of good and evil, and you'll be like God. And God appealed to Eve. She, she, the idea of, wow, that's pride. Pride, oh, uh, uh, I'm, and she believed Satan. That means she could have believed God, God or she could have believed Satan. But she believed Satan. So she did not believe God. That's unbelief. So the first sin that caused the fall is unbelief, not believing God, and instead choosing to believe Satan. And then, of course, there was pride, and pride comes before the fall, and then there was the sin of disobedience, eating from the tree, and, of course, that caused a, a defect. Death entered the world. They became... They, uh, there, there was a... A genetic defect happened. It happened. It's like it's like being exposed to radiation or some poisonous chemical or something, and now your body's poisoned. And now you're you know that it's going to kill you eventually. It took a long time, but it, eventually it did, it did die. And we've all inherited this defect, a genetic defect. It's mortality. But God wanted us just to be human beings and let Him provide for us. Now. Uh, another thing about uh, the word believe is it's spelled B-E-L-I-E-V-E. -E -E. In the middle of the word believe is the word lie. And that's what I just talked about. The lie. The lie was that, did God say that? No, it's not true. 
So Satan lied and said they would not die. Instead, they would be like God. That's interesting. But in believe, we have the word lie. And then, of course, the last three letters of the word believe is Eve. So I think the whole story we find right in that very word believe. That's what God wants us to do. And all the problems that uh, led up to the fall, that's all remedied if we will just only believe. Believe that Jesus is your Savior God. Believe that He did pay for your sins on that cross. And your sins are paid for. You're, you're forgiven. Believe that you will have eternal life because Jesus promised it to all believers. And believe that your place in heaven, paradise, your eternal life is guaranteed to you. It's guaranteed because Jesus, Christ himself, guarantees it to you. Believe that. Thank you for watching. Bless you all in the name of our great Savior God, Jesus.